Hey guys, welcome back to Taste of Victory. We got some more online simulator chrono battle gameplay today, and today we're playing All Force Vitramon. So I do have a deck list at the end of the video. I'll talk about it a little bit then. So go ahead and stay till the end to make sure you see that, or just skip to the end. I know your time is valuable, mine is too. So let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. I'm gonna go first because I won the uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors game. Pick the paper. So the game will start off with me going first. All right, so we have an okayish hand because the thing that really does matter here when you go first is that you at least have that rookie for that extra draw and a little more actions per turn before giving your opponent memory. And then we do draw into Hammer Spark, so that's kind of cool because we did um, a brick, not brick here, but okay, so yeah, we're good. So we draw into the um, Arrow of Idramon. So I am recording this gameplay in post since it's kind of hard to um, commentate and play at the same time. My gameplay is better um, ignoring the commentary, so I'm just playing. I played previously, now I'm commentating over it. So we did get a good draw there, go into Frigimon, so we can start him off with two, and then we draw into our ultimate, so now we have a clear, pla a clear path into all fours Vitramon. My opponent is playing black, and they do have the new uh, black structure deck that was also added in along with BT2. So they do have that uh, rookie blocker, which is really crazy that... Um, that uh, black gets a rookie blocker because uh, only uh, blue has that right now too and it costs one to digivolve into theirs and then like four to hard cast it I think so that's pretty cool value for them although it is one cost so you will literally never block over anything so it's like you're trading a digimon for a digimon most of the times it's what you're going to do with a blocker anyway so it's not that big of a drawback to have that kind of a weak rookie blocker it, it is nice to get rid of your opponent's um, stuff that they should deter it from attacking but it's whatever they go ahead and digivolve into chrysalimon Priscillion is their champion. Then with the inheritable, if you play another Digimon with the same name as this one, get plus one memory. Obviously meant to support the uh, Diaboromon that summons token copies of itself. And then they Digivolve into Inframon to pass me three for turn. Inframon's pretty cool in Diaboromon decks because it does reduce the cost by one. So if you use the um, one in the booster set one, it becomes two cost, I think. Maybe three? I don't remember if it's a three or four cost. But there is a uh, cheaper promo one, so it becomes even cheaper. But anyways, I attack with Frigimon on my turn because we do have jamming, so that lets me that allows me to be aggressive early on without worrying about losing my um without losing my uh Digimon, my stack right now. So I'm going to play Vulcan's Hammer to increase my memory. So that way I go from three to four. I can play tie without um uh but I could play tie and then play Arrow Vidramon and uh, choke my opponent at a, I could choke my opponent at one memory while getting more actions per turn. And because I uh, was able to do that, I was able to play uh, V Tamer out first. And because there is a Tamer out, I could Digivolve into Aerial Vidramon, so I don't, I could restand it and I don't have to worry about it being attacked that next turn. My opponent does Digivolve into Diaboromon though, so it's my turn now, starting off at two memory, I get the free Digivolve off of Gobomon, drawing to another rookie Vimon, who is an excellent card because he allows you to draw more if you have um, restands. So at this point, I was just checking, uh, double checking the stack and what um, how Dead World One actually activates, and it does activate by battle. I cannot attack it right now though, so it doesn't uh, matter because it is in the unsuspended position. So I'm going to activate V Timer, V Timer Tie to draw instead of attacking, because um, I'm trying to remember what I was doing. I was digging for a Vulcan's Hammer so that I would be able to Digivolve into All Force Vitram on that turn and it would be able to like swing with it and stuff or at least be able to like Digivolve and not pass turn just yet so I get a little more actions per turn. You know, maybe then I could have Digivolved into my blocker to be able to bring it out next turn. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out, but either way, I think it would have passed turn so it doesn't matter, so that's fine. My All Force is still active so it's okay, can't be attacked over. At best, it could be Digivolved. So he is going to attack, and that triggers Diaboromon's ability, or its effect. When attacking, you get to summon a token copy of itself that only has like 3,000 DP, I believe. But it does help you storm the field. So they do reveal my Frigimon. Only 4k DP, so no chance of Diaboromon being destroyed. But even if it was, it has it has that token it could delete to uh, save itself instead. I'm going to move into the battle area. I only have one memory. So now what I'm planning to do here is I'm going to attack Diaboromon and try to get rid of it off the field. It does have the token out on the field, so Diaboromon will be able to save itself. But because of my V Tamer tie out on the field, I could just restand it and then attack it once there is no um, tokens left on the field for it to destroy to save itself. So this way I will be able to power brute force through its uh, ability and take it out. So rather than attack security, I would rather uh, get the threat, the only threat that my opponent has off of the field, because as we saw uh, earlier, they hard casted their um, Numemon and don't have anything in raising area revealed. So that's telling me that they have uh, nothing to Digivolve up to. So they're kind of bricking really hard right now. So if I remove the their only threat they were able to get out this early into the game, it could really, really set them back. 
And because I do have uh, 11,000 DP to die over Roman's only 10k DP, I am uh, stronger than it and can attack over it. And no more tokens out on the field for it to destroy, so it was able to be defeated through battle. And that's really cool that, Dio uh, that uh, all fours Vigermon has the ability to, to keep standing like that. Because of the uh, ability to gain memory, I do get um, the extra to go into um, to go into Grizzlymon without passing turn, and then I can play Rena to dig um, for my next cards. I did not have an ultimate in hand, so off of the cards revealed with Rena, I got Arrow Vidramon so that I could go into um, an ultimate and then eventually into All Force Vidramon. It is now my opponent's turn, and they do reveal an egg this time. They get Sunimon, which is a cool uh, effect for a Diaboromon deck. My opponent Digivolves into Kiramon. If you play another Digimon with the same name as this one, uh, draw plus one. And then they digivolve into Chrysalimon. So they got they do get a good stack going now. So it's not as far back of a brick as I thought it would set them. But as you see there, they digivolve into Infermon to de-digivolve my um, Aero Vidramon. Because with two tamers out, that is um, a ton of security checks while they're only at four and no blocker. So um, although they could have digivolved and passed me with less memory, they decided to hard play to be able to get that de-digivolve effect to get rid of my... Um, my all force Vidramon, hoping the threat is gone. Unfortunately for them, I have three in hand, so I could just come back uh, perfectly fine. Uh, so tons of memory, they passed me by hard casting that, so uh, I'm able to comfortably do that, I'm not too worried. I do have two tamers on the field, so I'm gonna be able to get uh, three security attacks with this one all force Vidramon like this. I'm gonna activate Rena to get that plus 100 DP on um, all force Vidramon, and then that will restand him, and then all the effects from his inheritables go off, Upamon, get one memory from all force itself, and then jamming from um, from um, Aero Vidramon, do reveal Spider Shooter, and that is really unfortunate because that does uh, get rid of him. But hey, I got two other All Force Vidramons in my hand, so like this is really cool. Like, this is a showcase uh, of how much stuff All Force Vidramon could play through if you get the setup right. So like the thing with any combo deck is it's really hard to get that setup going, but once you do, like it just steams rolls, and because of jamming and stuff, you don't have to worry about security other than options. But yeah. That was a really cool to be able to play through all those threats and still have all this stuff. I get to restand, I get the extra memory from um, Old Force because it um, doesn't seem to be once per turn. That's pretty insane. I'm pretty sure it's once per turn. I'm not sure what. Yeah, so. Go ahead and attack uh, another security. I could go for another security to leave him with zero next turn with um, Grizzlymon, but I want that blocker out, so it doesn't matter. So I will start my opponent off with one memory, and then I still get to draw off of the Gobblemon. It is now my opponent's turn. They're going to move into the uh, raising area and then they will surrender for game. So that was the game against Black. That was really fun. I had a great time playing that one. Old Force Vigermon is a really fun deck because it's definitely you got to like get the pieces right and get it going. But man, when it gets going, is it a really fun deck? So let's go ahead and get into the um, deck profile. Okay, so right away, the first thing uh, we see that, that's kind of a weird choice is we're only running 12 rookies. Uh, a lot, The number that people suggest keeps going up. A lot of it is usually between 14 to 16, and I do agree with that. But for this deck, I needed um, space for the three tamers. No, no, the seven tamers and then three um, hammer sparks. So I felt cutting um, down to 12 was probably the safest option to do because I'm fine playing with the rookie ratios, but I really do not want to touch ultimate and um, champion ratios because I feel like that's really where the bricks start coming in. But yeah, Gabumon's a fantastic card for the uh, 1.0, 1.5 meta because on, if you have to unplay it, you get the draw anyways. And if not, you still get the draw because of the Digivolution mechanic. Vibon is great because it's designed to go with all four feature mon. You get that nice draw. It's really cool. And Golemon's a two-cost rookie, so it's fantastic to go wide or if, you know, for whatever reason you just need to play it, it's cheaper that way. I like Frigimon because this deck wants to be aggressive and get through as much security as fast as possible. And Frigimon allows that uh, to do that early by having Jammy. The only thing I fear would be, uh, you know, D Digivolve cards, which I don't fear nearly as much as, say, uh, Gaia Force and Cactus Breath, which would be the bigger, bigger worry going into uh, security swings. But that's pretty low odds because compared to every other Digimon being safe, I'm not too worried about that. So I do like taking that extra swing early game with uh, Frigimon. Then we do have uh, the uh, Vidramon. When it has a blue tamer out, you do get jamming, so more of the same, you get uh, more aggressive early on, but you do get the uh, conditional, um, more conditional than, say, Frigimon, but you get more DP as a trade-off. 
Then we got Grizzlymon, good old blocker, always want to have your blockers. And uh, Zudomon is a 4 of because with all 4s, Vitramon and those restands, um, you get memory like crazy. If you get a, a Zudomon underneath this thing, you uh, make pluses like mad, like it's unfair. Uh, originally, this was supposed to be uh, Monzeamon, I believe it's pronounced, you know, the little teddy bear guy from Adventure because it was a two cost ultimate, but the inheritables from both Zudomon and, and uh, Aero Vidramon are so worth it that I don't mind paying the extra memory. So I would definitely rather just have these guys. So Zudomon's really great, and if you brick, um, it's not too bad. You get to draw off of it. Then we have Aero Vidramon, who when uh, you digivolve it, you could restand with your blue guys. And I like that a lot, because we showcase in this duel, you could swing with your, um, uh, your um, jamming uh, champions and then restand it so you don't have to worry about losing them to your opponent next turn if you have this card in hand so i like that a lot and then it's inheritable is fantastic you only have to worry about surviving the uh first swing because 11k is not a lot for omega it's not terrible but it's not a lot like there is 12k um you know vanillas and um now we have 13ks eventually like need hogmon so um the jamming does come in handy i, I do appreciate that inheritable all force is the name of the game so now this is where it's weird I do have uh, two plus your mod and then two only mods. So I don't have Cox Express or anything like that uh, options for removal because I don't really like them too much for how expensive they are. They're only really useful in security. So I thought like only mod is basically like an option for removal. But the thing is like um, in the mirror a lot, you're going to face a lot of jamming Digimon or the old force will already have jamming from its inheritables. So only mod doesn't really help too much in the matchup. And I rarely went up going into it because by the time I get all force Vidramon out, I usually have enough tamers to be able to swing if not for game for a huge momentum turn so i'm actually thinking of cutting onimon because i tested this like quite a few games and he did not come out in any of them was not helpful in securing any of them so if you can run onimon absolutely always run onimon if you can afford to and have the space in your blue or red builds i totally uh i totally advocate for it but at least for this one i think i'm gonna cut it in favor of some caucus breath because i just want my security cards to be more impactful because that way i would be able to get past stuff that has jamming and get rid of it and it's for free if it was in security so we'll see and then only three hammer sparks because again i needed the space if you can fit four absolutely always run four but yeah it gets it's just free memory there's no reason not to ever run it in a blue build and that is the uh 1.5 yeah for english it's going to be 1.5 meta deck uh all fours vidrama so in our actual english meta we will have booster set three cards that you could toss in here all four like imperial drama should probably be decent in this Maybe not since it combos with, uh, with Pyodramon specifically, but there are other booster set 3 cards you'll want to add in for this. But at least for now, for this Chrono Battle meta, uh, this is what I'm running. I like it a lot. I got some good wins with it, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you guys are playing if you're building all force Vidramon, and uh, let me know what you would like to see in the next video. And until that next video, remember to stay hungry until you get a taste of victory.